After turning off power and removing all the covers, remove the two screws that fasten the left ribbon bracket to the chassis and remove the bracket. Remove the screws that hold the ribbon drive shaft assembly in place and remove the shaft assembly. Remove the ribbon drive pulley. Remove the screw and pulley at the end of the carriage motor shaft. Placing the carriage to the extreme left may help when loosening this screw. Remove the front pulley and remove the end of the cable from the pulley. Remove the spacer and rear pulley and remove the cable. Remove the pin from the shaft. Remove the screws that fasten the bearing plate to the chassis and remove the plate. Unplug the motor cables from the main logic board at P7 and P10. Release the cables and route them through the side of the chassis. On the left side of the printer, loosen the set screws and the belt tension brackets as far as possible. Remove the front bracket from the idler pulley shaft and move the bracket out of the way. Remove the belt from the pulley. Loosen the two screws in the carriage motor bracket and slide the braid connector out from under the rear screw. Slide the motor out of the clamp and pass the fan. Remove the two wire cable from the push-on connectors on the motor and install this cable on the new motor, black to black, red to red. Insert the new motor through the clamp and through the carriage belt. Place the belt around the idler pulley and place the pulley in the mounting brackets on the left side of the printer. Tighten the Allen screws on the idler brackets just enough to apply a small amount of tension in the belt. Locate the motor so that the belt is against the front flange of the motor pulley and the belt is centered in the opening in the side of the chassis. Make sure the motor does not touch the print head gap lever. Place the ground wire terminal under the rear clamp screws and tighten both screws. Loosely reinstall the bearing plate. Move the carriage to the far right and position the belt tension gauge on the center of the belt. At this time, the tip of the gauge should be suspended only a few thousands of an inch above the main carriage shaft. If the gauge is touching the shaft or is too far above the shaft, the belt tension may be adjusted with the adjustment screws on the left side of the printer. Tighten or loosen the screws only a small amount at a time in an alternating pattern until the belt is at the proper tension. Remove the gauge and move the carriage from side to side several times. Recheck the tension with the gauge and readjust if necessary. When the tension setting is correct, move the carriage to the right until it reaches the bumper. If the rearmost ribbon drive pulley is not installed, install it on the motor shaft at this time. Install the pin in the shaft first and then place the pulley on the shaft and slide it onto the pin with the slot in the flange of the pulley oriented toward the top of the printer. When in place, the slot in the flange must be at top dead center, plus or minus 45 degrees. If the slot is in this position, adjustment is complete. If the slot is not in this position, loosen the belt tensioning set screws enough to allow the belt to slip over the teeth in the motor pulley. Slip the belt teeth over the teeth in the motor pulley until the ribbon pulley is in the correct position and then readjust the belt tension. Preassemble the ribbon drive pulley cap by placing the screw through from the smooth side of the cap, placing the thin steel washers over the screw and inserting the torsion spring with one tang in the slot in the side of the cap. Press one end ball of the cable into the driver pulley. As viewed from the front of the printer, wrap the cable clockwise around the pulley one and a half turns, starting at the flange and working toward the back of the printer. The cable should exit off the bottom of the pulley and pass through the side of the chassis toward the large ribbon drive pulley. 
Place the Teflon washer on the shaft next to the driver pulley. In the carriage area, tape the cable to the ribbon tray to maintain tension on the first pulley. As viewed from the top of the large ribbon drive pulley, wrap the cable around the pulley in a clockwise direction starting from the bottom and wrapping upward three and a half turns. Insert the bottom of the pulley into the bushing on the ribbon tray. Tape this section of the cable to the ribbon tray and route the end of the cable back through the side of the chassis. Place the remaining end ball of the cable into the flange of the return pulley. As viewed from the front, wrap the cable counterclockwise, starting at the flange end. Place the pulley on the servo shaft, flange end first. While maintaining tension on the cable, Remove the tape holding the cable to the ribbon tray. Hold the pulley so that the cable is taut and place the pulley cap assembly on the end of the servo shaft. Finger tighten the screw. Make sure the tang on the end of the spring is seated in the slot of the return pulley and tighten the screw. Reinstall the ribbon drive shaft assembly. Carefully slide the carriage to the extreme left and back to the right two times to make sure that the cable is winding correctly on the pulleys. With the carriage at either end, the pulley with the least cable wrapped around it should have at least one and a half turns of cable remaining on the pulley. With the carriage to the extreme right, loosen the pulley cap screw and rotate the cap from minimal tension to one quarter turn clockwise and tighten the screw to 9 inch pounds or 10.4 centimeter kilograms. Leaving the screw too loose may allow the cable to come unwound. Over tightening may damage the pulley cap. When this adjustment is complete, proceed with the bi-directional print adjustment.